Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to welcome you into our place this morning. And as you can see, I am in our living room on my own. And the reason I'm doing this is just to give you a disclaimer this morning in full transparency that the live stream that we're about to show you was actually recorded last week. And so with that, after the government has imposed some other restrictions on us in terms of how many people can be in a room. We have adhered to them, but because this was filmed a week ago, you are about to see five people on the couch. And so we wanted to let you know in full transparency and accountability that that hasn't been done against the government's wishes, that it was in fact uh, pre-recorded a while ago when uh, five people were still allowed in a room. And so we're going to cut now and you're going to see, well, I'll be in there, but you're going to also see Tim and Krista and Ben and Kate and Tim as well. And uh, we'll be worshipping and praising God together. So I hope you enjoy our Palm Sunday service this morning. Thank you and God bless. All right. Good morning, everybody. And we welcome you to our living room. Church on the couch. Woohoo! And we are so excited because today is actually Palm Sunday, which is a wonderful celebration for the church. It's, it's a time for us to be so grateful for many, many things. And uh, really, it's the day that our Savior is celebrated. And we sing the words Hosanna, I think, quite a bit. And we're going we're gonna to do that, I think, uh, as we worship. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. We will. So we're going to do that now. Excellent. Can I share a quick word before we sing that? And uh, this morning, we're singing and we're worshiping about victory. And Palm Sunday was the start of victory that changed history. I managed to get that out. Victory that changed history. And I'd like to share with you from 1 Corinthians, where it actually says, But thanks be to God who gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever space you're in this morning, whether you're in the comfort of your bed, uh, whether you're sitting around having a coffee and having breakfast, breakfast, we'd love for you to engage with us this morning and do that not just to make us feel better, although it will make us feel better, but do that to worship God. Uh, he deserves our utmost, highest praise. And so together we're going to praise and worship Him as we sing Hosanna. Join with us as we sing.
presence right now but we want to say this morning that we want to thank you and praise you for the victory that we have through you we want to thank you for what Palm Sunday means to us it is the start of a victory that indeed changes history and so Lord we want to praise you and thank you for that right now Lord we want to give you all the glory and all the praise Lord, for all of our friends that may be connecting with this from wherever they are, just help them to encounter you in a new and a fresh way right now, this morning. O oh Lord, our God, our Saviour and our friend. Amen and amen. Well, we've got a bit of a different group gathered. Every Sunday we're, we're, we're just switching Changing things it up, up, aren't switching we? It up. And I it's really great. And I, I think maybe we should take an opportunity uh, just for those that maybe haven't had a chance to, to be on the journey with us from the beginning where we started to our... be on the couch? Yeah. To be yeah, in the living that's room. That's right. To be in the living with us. To be in the living room. room with that's us from right. the beginning. To just kind of say, like, this, this is our, our interpretation of doing church during this time and during the season that we're in. And I think um, we, we just wanted to have... A little bit of a of a laid back, authentic space, um, because we're not professionals. We're not. No. <laughs> we're not. No, you're right. We are not, we're professionals, not. We're not professionals, and and we don't want to pretend to be either. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to pretend to be. So we really wanted to. Sorry. Did you, oh. No, <laughs> I was going to say there's a fair bit of pretending that. No, but oh, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's but there's something about this space that we've tried to create, and so. So we thank you for coming along the journey with us, for those that have been with us, um, you know, through the last couple of weeks. And for those that are just joining us today, really, it's just the opportunity to create an authentic space where, uh, where we, can, we can be who we are uh, in the space that we're in. So one of the things that we've missed in the past, and, and someone made this suggestion, was that we really should be introducing ourselves. Yeah, right, that's fair, right? So, um, hi, I am Captain Krista Andrews, and myself and my husband Tim are the officers pastors of Carindale Salvos, and we've kicked Tim out for this one so that we can have some new friends join us, and then maybe next time Tim will kick me out, and he will be here on the couch with you, so we're just going to kind of share that up from here because we want to make sure that we're following the uh, regulations that have been put out, and so that's who I am. Who else we got here today? I think Tim wants to share. Oh, okay. Hi, Timmy. So, I'm Tim, but I'm not her Tim. No. Uh, I'm a different it's a different Tim. Tim. <laughs> it's a different Tim. There's two of us. Tim's word. Um, what yeah. else? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Is that it? Hello, Tim. Hello. <laughs> hey, Tim. And then we've got. Oh, I'm Ben. And and Ben is. <laughs> ben is very happy to be here. Potentially a little stressed about being on screen. 
Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, Ben, you said before, what was the thing you said before when you picked up the mic? Never used my mic. Never used a mic before. <laughs> put the mic up, put the yeah. mic up, Benny, so You're they can yeah, hear you. Hold it closer. There we go, there it is, there it is. Now everybody can hear you. Say your name. I'm Ben. <laughs> well done, mate. <laughs> ben is stressing. Oh, we have a lovely young lady behind us. I'm Kate. Hi, Kate. Nice Hi, to Kate. meet everyone if I haven't met you before. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I don't, that's, that's it. Kate, <laughs> that's my Kate name. is adding an instrument with us today that I think is just beautiful. I, I think it's uh, yes. fantastic that we have Thank the flexibility yes. to be able to do things like this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's brilliant. Good. Yeah. Good. It is a viola, just to confirm. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> not, Thank not you. Not the violin. Yeah, again, Sorry. Sorry. The, violin, the string Shalom. thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a string thing. There you go. And then we've got Mr. Jared. Yes. Hey, everyone. You've seen my face enough already, so. But it's good to see you all again. So we welcome you to our space here, and uh, thanks for joining us. And we know that some of, of you out there are, are congregational members that have been with us for years and are just in, enjoying and being part of this new space. There may be others of you that are joining us for the first time, and maybe uh, your own church is, is not happening uh, and you're popping in with us. You could be all over the world. I have no idea. I won't tell you that there isn't very many Canadians that are enjoying our time here together. We had the first week of the stream, we had Canada, obviously. Yes. Of just a couple of connections well, just there. Just a couple of connections. But we also yes. had Kenya. Yes. And of course, a couple of connections in the UK, yes. I saw, that were coming yes. through. Uh, and New Zealand as well. <laughs> yes. A couple of connections in New Zealand. So so we're well-connected people well, and nothing yeah. else. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's exciting days. And we, we love the opportunity that we have to connect with people that uh, we wouldn't be, normally be able to do. And that's... That's what God, I think, is creating in this space, right? And so one of the things, look, this, I've already mentioned that Palm Sunday is a celebration Sunday in the Christian church. Uh, it really is, and I think you mentioned this, Jared, at the beginning, it really sets off our Easter season and sets off our thinking towards the sacrifice that Christ made for us and the hope that we have and the victory that we have. But Palm Sunday is, is specifically about celebration. And, and the celebration takes place because the disciples uh, start celebrating the man and the miracles and the work that he, that Jesus had accomplished during his ministry. So my question for you, and I have seen a lot of people trying to be in a positive space because we're working very, very hard as a society to be in a positive space. And I think that there are folks that are specifically asking themselves the question each day, what am I thankful for? So my question for you is, what are you thankful for this past week? What are you thankful for, my friends here in this room? What are you thankful for this past week specifically? Who's going to start? <laughs> it's not me. You don't all have to share, but just whoever's can, comfortable. I'll do, yep. I'll go on you, Tim. Ben nominated me, so I'm going to step up. <laughs> um, so uh, like a lot of people, I've had the opportunity to uh, work from home, mm. and I am thankful that uh, my workplace does give me that flexibility to be able to do that. Um, but it's interesting, I was sitting at my desk this week, uh, this past week, and a couple of days ago, um, it was raining. And ordinarily, you just look at the window and go, oh yeah, it's raining. But this week, while I was working, it was a different experience because not only could I hear the rain or see the rain, but I could hear the rain, I could smell the rain. Mm. And for me, that was, uh, I suppose, something to celebrate in the uniqueness of the situation that we're in, yeah. in that, like, before when I'm in the office in, in the city, I'm disconnected from those, I suppose, sensations. And being able to work from home, you experience the same thing, but differently. Yeah. Uh, and and that, was, that was quite good. Yeah, I think yeah, it was, it yeah. was quite an experience. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Something simple, but so so good. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I'm gonna look behind me. And, and <laughs> um, I think something I've been um, thankful for these past week and couple of weeks, actually, since being out working at home, um, has been just the more time I've got to spend with my family. Mm. Um, we're all very busy people in our own senses, and now we've all been forced to stay home together yes. um which which has just been nice it's nice to be able to you know have lunch with everybody in the middle of the day because we're all working from home or you know get to sit down on the couch together at night or just things that we don't necessarily get to do all the time it's really nice to yeah just have that opportunity yeah 
Yeah, excellent, excellent. Jared, do you have anything? Well, I've always got something to say, don't yeah. I? But yes. um, I think following on from what Kate said, um, not just, I mean, it is spending time with family, but I think for me it's been maybe even another step. I've had a real, um, I wouldn't say crisis of identity, but certainly there's been a lot of gaping holes. And I know for, for, for many of us here and, and, and you watching at home that there's stuff that we normally do that we're not doing now. And so uh, the opportunity for me to find um, not just uh, that my identity isn't just in what I do and my identity isn't even in who I am but it's in whose I am mm. um, and my identity is through God and uh, that's been a really powerful shift and I'm not there yet by any means and that's going to continue to be a, a real struggle over the coming weeks or months uh, but yeah so but the opportunity to take that pause and stop being busy and actually find out that uh, I'm not Jared the person that does lots of different things um, I'm Jared, the, um, the child of God, mm. and there's a, there's a shift happening there, and that's been a really nice journey for me to be on. Yeah, good, yeah. good. I think, I think sometimes when we ask ourselves the question, especially in the season that we're in, what, what are we most thankful for today or for this week, we can potentially change our perspective. Um, and Because then we start looking for the things that we're thankful for instead of waiting for them just to happen, which, which is really great. And, and for those of you that joined us last Sunday, which, um, which Tim, Tim talked quite a bit about perspective and how important, especially in situations or in, uh, in the time that we're in, how important perspective is. And, and the fact that God draws us close so that we begin to see things from his point of view. And it's almost like putting on, you know, seeing things through his eyes rather than our own eyes and, and our own internal thinking that things are much bigger um, than we even can begin to realize when we, when we open ourselves up. And I think asking that question, what am I thankful for today? Uh, and I see a lot of people doing that on social media. I don't know if you've seen it, um, but people are trying to fill social media with the positives of what's happening in our world today and what's going on. And... When we change our perspective, um, it's interesting what happens in our space. And so that has just been really important, I know, for Tim and I over the last little bit. So look, we are jumping into uh, a sermon series that we had planned for this time, which is very simply, look again. So we had planned to be preaching over the Easter week um, of the theme, look again. And we decided we're going we're gonna to stick with that. And actually... If, if I could even dare to say this, the theme itself is probably more fitting now than even when we probably originally planned it. And uh, so we're just, we're, <laughs> change perspective, we're seeing things even within this story that are different and the story of Jesus. So we're actually going to turn to Luke 19, and if you have uh, your Bible, pull it up. If you have uh, your computer and you can look up uh, Bible Gateway. Uh, look it up. We're looking at Luke 19, beginning at verse 28. Luke 19, beginning at verse 28. And this is what's called in the NIV, in the New International Version, it's called the Triumphal Entry. So I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and read right from Scripture here. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going to, up to Jerusalem. And as he approached Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which has, which has never, ever been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, tell him, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as they had told them. And as they were untying the colt, the owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their cloaks onto the road. And when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully praising God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Here's where the celebration comes in. And they said this, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to in the highest. 
some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And that is where we see the celebration of today. Um, and it specifically says the reason why they were celebrating um, as the, the disciples were preparing, they began joyfully praising God in loud voices for all of the miracles that they had seen. And so they were thankful. And out of their thankfulness, they celebrated. But that is not what we're focusing on today. <laughs> um, <laughs> look again! Remember I said it's look again! Uh, we're drawn to the disciples in the story. I've heard, I don't know about you, I've heard many, many sermons about the disciples, about... Uh, Jesus, about the crowd, even about the children that we're celebrating. We share that uh, with, with the kids. The palm branches I've talked about in past sermons on Palm Sunday, and even the rocks at the end of it. it like I have heard many, many sermons on the rocks that cry out. What about the poor donkey? <laughs> We've left out the poor donkey. And so when we were thinking about look again, when we were thinking about Look Again, uh, we, we stopped for a minute and we thought, Tim and I thought about the donkey. And I don't know how many of you have seen the movie The Star. Oh, come on. Oh, sorry. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> like looks from the people. <laughs> no that way! Well. It's right, I've seen it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you have children, you've seen the Christmas movie, The Star. And that whole movie is from the perspective of the donkey. Anyway, it's a great movie. <laughs> and if you're bored, because I'm sure many of you are, you should watch it, even though it's not Christmas time, because it's a great movie. Just not yet. Wait, wait till the live stream. Goes. Wait till the live stream is over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not <right> now. <laughs> oh, gosh. The donkey is often, often overlooked in this story. And I think that, actually, as we, as we, as we look at that intentionally, there is something that we can consider when we look at the donkey. And there's something interesting that, that we probably miss the first time we read through that story. And I just read it through for you, and I'm, prob I'm pr almost sure you would have missed this. But if we look again, it may cause us to think more intentionally about our own lives and purpose. So hang with me. I'm going to make sense now in a few minutes. Uh, at the beginning of the passage that was read uh, just a few minutes ago, Jesus is coming into Jerusalem and beginning his journey towards the cross, which is what Palm Sunday kicks off for us. And now we often recognize that this is a story of celebration, and we've been talking about that already. There's hallelujahs that are being, uh, being thrown out there, and we even sang in that genre today, I raise a hallelujah. And in the middle of that, Jesus sends two of his disciples ahead of him to go and find a donkey, or a colt, it's said in, in the NIV version. And the donkey that he would eventually ride as he goes into the city, to the fanfare that he experiences from the people. And, and there is perhaps more significance in the donkey in this story than we realize at first. A detail that we miss uh, is that before the disciples could bring the donkey, Jesus used the words, untie him right? Okay, stay with me. Untie him. In verse 19, the word tied is a form that is mentioned as we look at the donkey. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an important detail. The text tells us that the donkey had never been ridden. So there's a very real sense that this donkey was created for a specific purpose. And that purpose was to serve Jesus. It's a detail that we can't miss. But the donkey was tied up. And in order for it to fulfill its purpose, it needed to be untied. Now, why does Luke feel the need to emphasize this several times? Because it's said at least three or four times. And, and clearly, I think that there is an important insight here that we have to uh, acknowledge for ourselves. And I think we could all readily admit that we are often tied to something, tied down to something. We are tied down to many things. For some, it's anxiety, uh, apprehension. For some, uh, it's a need to forgive somebody else and you're unable to do so. For others, it could actually even be addiction uh, and that control that addiction can have on our lives. And dare I say, <laughs> and I talk to myself when I say this, for some, it's our smartphones and our tablets 
and we're unable to put these devices down. As I look at myself, I'm surrounded. <laughs> I'm surrounded by devices. Uh, and, and I would say that that's probably even more so the case in our lives right now, that more people are, are, are on that. For many of us, it's the desperate need to let go and be released and not be afraid to show love, peace, faith, joy, or to share the gospel with others. And as Christians, we need to be untied from what weighs us down. And it's important for us to realize that Palm Sunday is not just a celebration of Christ the King, but it is a celebration of Jesus as liberator from our dependencies and our burdens. And that is why we focused a lot of our songs this morning on victory, because it really is a, a, a release and Jesus is the liberator. And we need to be free to experience the fullness of Jesus in our lives. And we are meant to travel with him, to follow him on his journey to Jerusalem, the holy city, the city where God dwells. And we are meant to celebrate and we were created for a purpose, and that's to love God and to love each other. As a pastor, every day I am faced with the real-life troubles that bind people's dysfunction. And I even recognize that more and more within my own life, especially as activities get taken away or, or we've been taught, Jared, you've said, the things that are taken because we can't do them, how we didn't even realize how much our identity was actually taken up into these things. And, and while a lot of these things are good, in some ways they actually can tie us down. And, and we can become blind to the dysfunction that we may, we may actually put ourselves in without even realizing it. And many of us are too scared to untie ourselves from the chains of fear, and I think that's just a real thing for us uh, today. But the fact is we cannot fully commit to God when we are tied. We must be released. We must surrender our burdens, our weights. Sometimes we use that word. We've got to release ourselves from the weights that tie us down. And much like the owner who surrendered his donkey to the two disciples on that day, by relinquishing our own burdens, we are free to praise and honor and serve God freely. So Palm Sunday is a time when we can begin our own journey towards the cross by asking ourselves a very, very simple question. What am I tied to that is preventing me from praising, honoring, and serving God? And this really, really is a question I think that is even more potent or more real for us more than ever. What are we tied to? And I, I think we have a greater opportunity with all of the noise of the world, <laughs> oh, where we discover the rain, uh, you know, we, where we see things from a different perspective, uh, just because we're in a different place, we're working from a different area. Uh, you know, that's a wonderful example of the ways that God is putting us in different environments where we're, we're free to see things differently from a different perspective. And so that's just, uh, just what we're being called to. And so in this story, we look again, not at the obvious, but we look again at the opportunities that we have to untie ourselves so that we're fully released to do the things that God is calling us to do. We're going to sing a song together. Uh, the song that we sang actually just before we, uh, we looked into scripture and we, we shared. And it's a beautiful song that just says, my chains are gone, I've been set free. It's a song of freedom. And as we sing this, this chorus, um, I, I want to make the acknowledgement of the fact that there are probably those of us who are listening today that are recognizing even just in the safeness of the area where we are, where we're watching this live stream, some of us may be alone. Some of us may be with, uh, with those in our house. Um, but we're in a different space where we can probably be more vulnerable. And, and I would say, as we sing, my chains are gone, you know, recognize within yourself what it is that you need to release, that you're tied to. For, it may be the opportunity of writing it down uh, in a journal. Maybe it's just, just recognizing what that is and saying it aloud. Uh, which, which you can do in your own space, absolutely. Um, for some of you, uh, it may be that you have actually never accepted Jesus into your heart. Now, I'm just going to get you to start playing there, Tim. Um, 
you've never accepted Jesus into your heart and there's no better time to do that than here and now. And we often, if, if we were all together in this place of worship, we often say that now is the time, if you don't know Jesus, then, then take a minute and give your heart to him and say, hey look, I haven't done the right things in my heart. I haven't done the right things in my life. It's, it's, that's called confession. And then it's the invitation of asking God into your heart. And, and really that's freedom. That's the freedom that we're talking about. Uh, my chains are gone. I've been set free. What an opportunity for you to do that now on Palm Sunday as we get ready to celebrate what Jesus has done for us in our hearts and in our lives. So we're going to sing this and then I'm going to pray. And I'm going to pray a prayer that is going to help us release maybe the things that we're being tied to but is also uh, going to help us accept Jesus into our heart uh, if that is your experience today. So let's sing. Let's sing together this song and then we'll pray. My chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior has ransomed me and like a grateful. We are grateful as we consider the fact that, um, that we can commune, we can be with you wherever we are. And, and that really is a gift and I think it's a gift that we are beginning to recognize more and more and more. And Lord, today we, we've talked about the celebration of Palm Sunday. We've shared some of the things that we're thankful for this past week. And we've recognized the fact that you call us, each and every one, to a purpose. And Lord, we want to be released to be able to live fully in that purpose, the purpose that you have for us. And so I would pray right now uh, for, for all of my friends who are here in this room, but also for all of my friends that are listening and are watching. Lord, I pray for the thing that is keeping them from fully engaging in the opportunity to be in your will or to be in the presence and the purpose of who you are. And so we want to be untied this morning, God. And so Lord, if it's, if it's worry, if it's fear, if it's anxiousness, if it's health concerns, family concerns, Lord, it, there, there's, there's a whole gamut of things that keep us from fully engaging with you. Lord, I pray that you would help us to just give those over to you. And in these moments, Lord, I recognize that there are people who are listening that may be listening for the first time or, or that just have never had the opportunity to, to, to invite you into their hearts. And so, God, I pray that this would be the moment and this would be the day. And so, Lord, in their thoughts, in their mind, as they confess to you the things that they know they haven't done right, I pray that you would also help them to invite you into their heart. And so I pray those words for my friends right now that don't know you, Lord. And I would ask that you would just continue to allow for your spirit to be alive and well in our church. And as we are recognizing uh, more and more these days that church is not about the building or the songs we sing or the instruments we play or the traditions that we hold dear, 
We just want to be the church where we are, Lord. And so we ask that you would take away anything that would hold us back. God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this space that you give us. And may we just continue to grow more and more in love with you in the days ahead. These are precious moments and they're a gift. This we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, look, if you, uh, if you have asked the Lord into your heart today and you want to let us know, we were talking last week how important it is for, for people to engage with us online. Because the thing is, is that we're, we're not able to do this in person, uh, but we would love for you to mes message into us and let us know what, what God is doing in your space. And the other thing, actually, that would be great is answer that question for us, the question that I asked these guys here. I mean, if we were in church all together in this place, we would have said, oh, turn to the person next to you, wouldn't we? Because we do that. We make everybody uncomfortable and yeah, say that. Yeah. Forced, forced sharing, I the think forced it is. The forced sharing. sharing. Yeah. We do that a lot, yeah. but we would say, turn to the person next to you and, and you know, answer that question. What, what are you thankful for this week? Well, we want to know what you're thankful for. We want you to, to exercise that. Exercise that. And type it in. Message it in. Put it in the comments. Do whatever. Because actually, that ministers to our heart as well as we hear from you about the things that you are, you are thankful for. We want Palm Sunday to be a celebration of Christ, but also of what God is doing in your hearts and in your lives. And so, yeah, do that. We would love to hear from you. You would just brighten our day if you jumped on. Uh, so... Next weekend is the big weekend. Easter. Easter. Giddy up. Giddy ah. up. <laughs> and it's going to be different. It's yeah. going to be different for Carindale Salvos. It's going to be very different. Yeah. But we believe that God is going to speak into our space. Now, we don't have the full week Easter weekend planned out in regards to what we're going to share or how we're going to live stream. But I can confirm that we will do something on Good Friday. Yeah. And we will do something on Easter Sunday morning. Uh, oh, actually, THQ is doing a live stream Easter Sunday morning. And so we're going to share. THQ is our territorial headquarters. We're going to share that live stream. And then we're going to do something, uh, something ourselves, maybe a little, a little bit later on in the day yeah. or something like that, just so that we can connect as a family uh, and celebrate Easter together. It's going to be different, but it's going to be just fine. God uh, does things in, in the different mm, yep. realities that we're in. Yep. So if you, if you haven't done this already, Instagram, like us. Uh, oh, do you do that on Instagram? Do you like on Instagram? You, you follow, follow. You follow, 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 follow on Instagram. Follow on Instagram. Follow like on Facebook. Look, see, Tim isn't here to, I, the tech, the to tech keep part me of the organized. Is, yeah. Okay, follow us on Facebook. No, yeah. Instagram. Instagram. Follow. Follow like Instagram. us on like Facebook. On Facebook. <laughs> Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we, we look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> Absolutely. Is there anything else we need to say? <laughs> no. no. I think the silence says it all. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Happy Palm Sunday, everybody. We love you. From Carindale Salvos, we love you. Thank yeah. you very much. Bye -bye. Have a wonderful Bye -bye. day. Bye. Bye. Bye.